Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to, well, just down the end of our lane. And as you can see, the bluebells are just coming out this year. So come and join me back at the studio. I've got a lovely little bluebell project for you. And welcome back. So today we're going to have a go at this very loose, impressionistic, even verging on semi-abstract bluebell woods. Now I really want you to have a go at experimenting with the paint and seeing what it can do when you use lots of water, lots of paint, lots of splashing around and most important just enjoy it. Don't worry if it turns out to be a mess, it's all a good learning curve. Okay to start with I've been trying to mix a good bluebell colour. It's quite unique not being a blue or a purple. So I'm experimenting here with a 50-50 mix of French ultramarine, which is already a warm blue, with some dioxidine purple. Now wouldn't it be good to have a ready-made colour and we could call it something like Bluebell Shade? Hang on a minute, we can. Margot, come and make some paints. Okay, so we start with a binder, which is mainly gum arabic, and Margot's secret recipe. Now it's so secret that I don't even know what's in it. Next in goes the pure pigment powder. And a good stir. Next it has to be ground very finely with a glass muller. The pigment and binder really have to blend together to become almost one ingredient. So here it is, set after a few days. Let's give it a go. Yep, does all the things a good watercolour paint should. And it's a wonderful colour. Okay, so for today's materials, I'm using for the third week running this De La Rowney watercolour art board. It's great, cold press finish, nice and thick, 1.4 millimetres. Certainly won't need stretching. Today's paints, I'm going to be using some French Ultramarine, Glycerin Crimson, Cadmium Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Sap Green, and some Burnt Umber some white gouache and of course our freshly made bluebell shade. Brushes a number 12 round three quarter inch flat and my trusty number three rigger and my little spray bottle. So off we go with the drawing. No template today it's nice and simple. And here just the suggestion of a path and perhaps an old fallen branch. Now this is all made up so there's no reference photo either. Now with my flat brush I'm wetting the gaps between the trees and in I go with this dirty old colour that was left on my palette. Now I'll take you through the colours as I go, but you can really experiment in here and just chuck in whatever you want. This is some sap green with a little touch of cadmium yellow. Here some yellow ochre. And a touch of alizarin crimson. And this is some ultramarine. 
Now this grey I've mixed from my three primaries and it wants to be a nice bluish grey. about a touch of blue bell shade. Back to the grey again and this is still all done wet in wet. splatting in here a touch of green and as I often say it's a great way of getting colour into a wet wash without disturbing the paint with your brush. All similar colours here and lots of wet in wet washes with quick confident brush strokes. Now I've got no idea why I've put some red in here, but sometimes you just have to go with your instinct. Now for that lovely blue bell colour. Leave it. Lots of it and very watery. Here I'm just blending in some ultramarine. If you paint in this loose, semi-abstract way, you'll often get those happy accidents that you can never plan. The paint just does its job and you can sit back and watch it happen. for some directional splatting. Some of the paint is going into the wet, some into damp and some into dry, giving you all these lovely textures. Here is just some clean water to soften a few of the edges. Here, a little very dark grey. And I'm using my rigger to put in some more suggestions of those trees again. Some going into damp areas and some going into dry. So now 
now we need to let this totally dry. So it's a perfect time for a short break and a bluebell glass of Whitley Neal Palmer Violet Gin. Ooh. Next, I'm warming up these trunks with some yellow ochre and a touch of burnt umber at the top. Here is some of the grey mix again. and just a touch of ultramarine. in with my rigger and here I'm adding in a touch of our bluebell colour no to give the painting that touch of continuity I'm also keeping the paint moving by adding in a light spray of clean water Now for this old log and a mix of yellow ochre and burnt umber. Lifting out here with a damp brush. Then adding in a shadow with some strong burnt umber. few more splats here with the bluebell mix A few more details in the trees with a mix of burnt umber and ultramarine. Now I really don't want to overwork this today. It must be kept nice and simple. damp tissue here for my usual technique of blending and softening.
Now what I'm doing here is mixing in some of the bluebell colour with some white gouache or acrylic paint will work so I get an opaque paint to splatter in some lighter colour flowers. And here with just a touch of white. So I want the freshness and spontaneity of this painting to show through, so I think we'll call it a day. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. Coming up now are a few paintings that I've done over the years of Bluebell Woods, so please check them out. just like to say a big thank you again to everyone for watching please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already it really does help to grow the channel i look forward to seeing you all again next week oh, don't forget as well there's a facebook page if you want to share your paintings take care see you all for watercolor wednesday next week mm -hmm.